Okay, we are recording again. So, uh, today's video, we're going to be talking about how to put together your macros in the right nutrition plan. So, uh, let's get right into it. Okay, so, all right, cool. So, really simple. What we are, I've done is put together a really simple way to calculate what kind of food you need or what amounts of food you need to put in your program based on some very, very simple mathematics. So, the easiest way to work out your calories is body weight in kilograms times 29. Okay, so if I'm just getting the calculator out now, it's in my hand. Um, it's incorrect there. So say you're 80 kilos times 29, it's gonna get you 2,320 calories. That's perfectly fine for a fat loss diet. It should get you right on track. So body weight in kilos times 29 will work across the board if you're only like 50, no, sorry about that. Cords. There we go. If we are 50 kilos, 50 times 29, looking at 1450 calories. So it's going to give you a, a more of a modest calorie deficit. It's still going to get you in a calorie deficit. I don't want to be doing any really aggressive calorie deficits at this time. Having too serious calorie deficit is not really ideal for your immune system. So I'm pretty sure it's obvious why we don't want to be doing that. Protein, uh, two times body weight in kilos. Really, really simple. Uh, so two grams, uh, per kilo body weight. So if you're 80 kilos, it's 160 uh, grams of protein. Very, very simple. This is the most important one to hit. Fats of 1.5 uh, grams per kilogram body weight. A lot of people recommend to go one gram. The reason why I'm doing this is because we're in a calorie deficit. If your fats are below 0.3 grams per kilo body weight for too long, there will be disruption to your hormonal system. Here, there will not be. If you're looking at maintaining your weight, it's just simply putting your fats up to one gram per kilo body weight is a very simple way to do that as well. And carbs, whatever you got left. So the way is the way to work out, if you've got a thousand calories left over, for example, carbs, uh, four calories per gram. So you're gonna get 250 grams of carbohydrates in your diet, okay? So really, really easy calculations to do. What I recommend you do if you want to, actually, we'll come back to that. We'll go for the next one first. Next one's a really simple way to do it as well. 800 grams of combined plant matter per day. This is just a way that you can basically have an easier way to eat your food. So 500 grams of combined plant matter, that can be 500 grams of vegetables and 300 grams of fruit. That's 500 grams of veggies is the equivalent of about four cups. So it's not really that much. And 300 grams is about two pieces of fruit. So again, nothing that serious. Each meal must have a protein base. So, you know, chicken, tuna, vegan protein options, protein shake, uh, low fat, ch Greek protein based yogurt, all that kind of stuff is really good. From there, if you've done these, add some healthy starches and fat. So you could have some oats, you could have some potatoes, you could have some rice, and then just throw in some healthy fats of that. Like if it's breakfast, you might throw some peanut butter in with it. If it's a salad that you're making, you might throw some olive oil or some avocado. If it's a dinner, maybe some butter on top of the potatoes, something like that. Just keep it really, really simple and really, really basic. The most important thing is to hit the combined plant matter and the protein base. Add palatable foods one to two times a week. So this is where you, if you're consistent with this, you can have dessert or get takeout or sorry, home delivery um, once or twice a week. It's a very, very valuable thing for you to do. Okay, it can be a little bit easier socially to do this. And for most people, this way of eating can improves health quite quickly just because you get such a high amount of plant matter and protein. It will generally tick the protein box from the last way we're doing it. Carb box, you might miss it. The fat one, you might miss it. You might not get enough each day. What will happen is it'll generally add up to be okay over the course of a week. Remember, with fat loss, we're looking at averages. We're not looking at what we do in one day and it being like the be all and end all, it's the averages over the course of a week. This plan generally helps you do that. The final strategy I'm gonna discuss is what's called a modified protein sparing fast. Wow. That is a strategy to help you maintain muscle and allow you to eat a little bit more food at the end of the day. So this is not a bad strategy for someone who works like does quite a lot of work throughout the day. They're fully busy, they don't think about eating um, and, but you do enjoy having a bigger meal if you do have that as your first social interaction for the day. Um, so for me, for example, this is something that I could find quite useful because uh, I'm home by myself all throughout the day at the moment uh, and I can have a large meal at night and I've been doing something similar to this. 
So protein, fibrous vegetables only for the first couple of meals of the day. Really simple. We pick the protein and the veggies. Why? Because it keeps you full and for optimal health reasons. And what it does here, it allows you to have a large meal at night without restrictions. So it allows you to basically have a little bit more dietary freedom. It's not a bad way to go about things. It's something I wouldn't do every single day all the time. Some people find it works really well. Uh, again, try it out and see how it goes to you. So it's basically protein and fibrous veggies for the first two to three meals of a day. Really simple, depending if you have three or four meals. And then dinner, you can have, if you want to have like spaghetti bolognese, a glass of wine, that's okay. As an example, you could, there, there's a lot more options there. Now the final slide is some hunger management tips. Because when we haven't got as much to do, we generally do tend to feel hunger and we mistake boredom for hunger. So there's a few things that we can do. None of this is fancy, but all of this is very, very effective. We can increase fluids. Fluids that work, black coffee. Black coffee will help suppress the appetite. It can slightly help increase fat burning, but don't hold me to that. Uh, tea, water, and diet carbonated beverages. All these are good. The carbonated beverages are really good uh, because the gas actually takes up some space in your stomach and actually creates a little bit of an expansion. And what that does, it tells your body to release some hormones that will bring down overall levels of hunger. It's quite a complicated pathway, so we won't go in it too much. But this pathway is very important when we start eating more protein and plant-based foods. So what happens there is as we have more food in the stomach and it swells open, it releases signals to basically decrease the hormones that make you feel hungry. So this is why the third point is, and the second point, two more, is to start meal by adding the protein and plant base first. Add the others after if you're hungry. So chewing more, basically it changes the hormonal system as well. You do digest a little bit more out of the food, which is cool, but it will improve your hormonal system and actually allow the signals of satiety to get to your brain a little bit faster. Chewing more is never really a bad idea. I've had heaps of clients come to me with digestive uh, gut health issues and I've just said, how many times do you chew? And they say, what's that? Just by simply chewing more, people get much more out of their food. By adding the protein and the plant-based first, what you can do then is start with that party meal. And then what happens is you'll probably be less likely to be hungry for the carbohydrates and fats and sugary foods after if you do that. This is a strategy I learned oh, maybe got a number of years ago from Charles Poliquin, strength coach, uh, who's gotten more people lean than I could even count I've ever met in my life. And every single athlete had to eat that um, salad before they ate their main meal. What that did is it made sure they hit their um, plant-based numbers, they hit their micronutrition numbers, then they had their protein, then they would have their carbs and fats after that, but they could stop if they were full. It's a really simple strategy, but it's really powerful. It's one I still do to this day. And the last one is to find hobbies to alleviate boredom. A lot of people will hunger eat, uh, well not hunger eat, will be uh, eating to alleviate boredom at the moment. So what we wanna do is do some other stuff. There's so many things that we can do. Uh, if you go online, there's so many things that you can actually learn for free that will actually help you get through this time and will also help you after. So if you want any suggestions that, I'm doing quite a few of these things at the moment, reach out to me and I'll be able to help find some things for you that help you alleviate boredom. Although I'm sure everyone has some hobbies that they've neglected for quite a period of time. Now's the time to get back into them. Make this time something beneficial. So guys, to work out what strategy works for you, it needs to play to your strengths. If you're a more analytical data-driven person, the first one where we calculate is probably gonna be best. If you're someone that likes to have bigger meals, the protein sparing one's probably gonna be best. And if you're someone who doesn't wanna to have to think too much, having 800 grams of, pro of vegetable matter and the protein in each meal is the best plan for you to do. Any questions, guys, hit me up and I'll see you soon.